Costs in space are like a thread that maintains activity in the launch market. In the past, this thread, or the cost of launching and producing rockets, was both long and thick, making it difficult for the entire space industry to develop sustainably and instead leading to an exorbitant price. For example, in the 1960s, NASA spent $28 billion to send astronauts to the moon, which today would be equivalent to about $288 billion when adjusted for inflation. However, everything has changed significantly with the arrival of SpaceX. They have introduced a new trend in space and, crucially, provided the key to reducing costs, making the initially long thread shorter and closer to larger goals. And SpaceX has not limited this within the framework of the United States. They've also spread new opportunities to many other organizations and businesses all over the world. Recently, on May 28th, SpaceX used its workhorse rocket, the Falcon 9, to save a mission for the European Space Agency. The mission included a spacecraft named Earth Cloud Aerosol and Radiation Explorer, also known as EarthCare. EarthCare is an 800 million euro, 870 million US dollar ESA-led mission to study clouds and aerosols in the atmosphere. The spacecraft carries four instruments, including a cloud profiling radar provided by the Japanese space agency JAXA at a cost of 8.3 billion yen or 53 million US dollars. JAXA dubbed the spacecraft Hakuru or White Dragon because of the spacecraft's appearance. The 2200 kilogram spacecraft flying in sun synchronous orbit at an altitude of 393 kilometers will collect data on clouds and aerosols in the atmosphere, along with imagery and measurements of reflected sunlight and radiated heat. That information will be used for the atmospheric science, including climate and weather models. But why did I say that SpaceX saved ESA? It's because this mission had previously been delayed and faced cost overruns. The development process for this project took about two decades and caused costs to increase by up to 30% before launch. Moreover, from the beginning, the spacecraft was set to launch on a Russian Soyuz rocket. ESA announced a launch agreement with Ariane Space in October. 2019 noted a launch period that opened in June 2022 from the Guiana Space Center in French Guiana. However, following Russia's invasion of Ukraine in Feb 2022, ESA Director General Joseph Oshbacher announced in October 2022 that EarthCare would launch on Europe's Vega C rocket. Plans shifted again when a static fire test on the path to Vega C's return to flight campaign sidelined that rocket until likely late 2024. That caused ESA to change plans once again, and the mission was then assigned to SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket. Europe's loss of the Soyuz and lack of its own launchers put multiple other spacecraft on similar paths to Earth care. SpaceX has previously been tapped to launch Euclid in 2023, two Galileo missions, the first of which launched in April, and Hera, which will launch in October this year. Thus, thanks to SpaceX's Falcon 9, the European Space Agent seems to have been able to overcome the launch crisis that's plagued the organization since 2022. Another major European satellite company based in London also relied on Falcon 9 to resolve its backlog of missions and avoid potential heavy losses. That company is OneWeb. At the time when the Kremlin escalated the war in Ukraine in 2022, OneWeb, based in London, was the largest and practically only foreign customer completely dependent on Soyuz. According to industry sources, OneWeb had paid up to 90% of the cost for all Soyuz rockets delivered to deploy first-generation satellites for their constellation. However, after an ultimatum from Dmitry Rogozhin, the former head of Russia's space agency Roscosmos, demanded that for the launch to proceed, the UK government must fully divest its $500 million stake in OneWeb and the company must guarantee that their satellites would not be used for military purposes. OneWeb and the UK refused to meet these demands and suspended all subsequent satellite launches from Roscosmos' launch site at the Balkanor Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. Due to this sudden event, OneWeb suffered a loss of $229.2 million in 2022, contributing to a 631% increase in the company's total losses. Eventually, OneWeb turned to its competitor, SpaceX, to purchase Falcon 9 launches to send up their satellites. We thank SpaceX for their support, which reflect our shared vision for the boundless potential of space, OneWeb's chief executive, Neil Masterson, said in a statement. With these launch plans in space, we are on track to finish building out our full fleet of satellites and deliver robust, fast, secure connectivity around the globe. 
Although the prices negotiated between two parties were kept confidential, it is fair to say that these flights are likely significantly cheaper than those with Soyuz, simply because the Falcon 9 is reusable. Using reusable rockets instead of traditional ones can be up to 65% cheaper. The SpaceX Falcon 9 has proven to be the most effective vehicle for this market, making up a whopping 90 of the 211 world launches last year. And there is no close second. Indeed, SpaceX is the chief architect of the path to the new frontier. However, even with weekly Falcon 9 launches, it's still incredibly expensive to move mass into and around in space. This is in part because even the best rockets suffer from the tyranny of the rocket equation, a physics principle illustrating one of the field's great challenges, that it takes propellant to lift propellant. While aircraft typically take off with around 50% of their mass being fuel, rockets hover around 85%, counting both fuel and oxidizer, liquid oxygen. To minimize the total propellant needed for a mission, weight is shed mid-launch. Often, this involves dropping the heavy and high-thrust first stage after ascending beyond the thicker parts of the atmosphere. By reducing weight mid-flight, achieving orbital velocity with a second-stage engine is easier. Typically, the second stage burns up in the atmosphere upon re-entry. SpaceX has achieved a number of firsts here, namely pioneering rapid reuse of the first stage through vertical landing and developing some of the best rocket engines with the Merlin and Raptor. The latter are vying to be the first full-flow Methalox propulsion system to reach orbit. In terms of rocketry, this would be a significant achievement that helps balance specific impulse, fuel economy, propellant storage mass, and pure thrust, tempering the tyranny of the rocket equation. Like an aircraft, however, building a rocket is far more expensive than fueling it. The Falcon 9's propellant costs around 200 grand a flight. By far the most expensive part of the rocket is the massive first stage, nearly 60% of the total cost for the Falcon 9. A reusable first stage amortizes this across a number of launches, now exceeding 10 for Falcon 9. Naturally, reducing the largest cost factor shook the market. The question now is, what's next for the launch in its current state? Looking further forward, what new opportunities will open up when the next step function decline and launch cost occurs? A wave of new rocket companies seek to dethrone the Falcon 9 by achieving even greater reusability and further reducing production costs. Personally, I'm excited about Stoke Space's fully reusable rocket, Relativity Space's 3D printed engines, and Rocket Lab's structural innovations in their neutron launch system. The real competition in the launch market is on its way, and it's likely we'll see Falcon 9's dominance and margins erode as competition comes online. However, SpaceX's Starship, a 100,000 kilogram payload, fully reusable rocket will completely change the space ecosystem. And this isn't just for deploying large volumes of Starlink satellites. Starship makes space markets of physical goods and moving people become very real possibilities. While Starship will not launch at a break-even nor severely undercut existing prices, it'll nonetheless usher in an era of larger payloads unconstrained by mass for both in-orbit and deep space objectives. Realistically, something like a thousand bucks a kg will still shake up the market. A starship sitting in low Earth orbit could also act as a gas station, fueling a web of spacecraft activity serving commercial stations and transporting assets through cislunar space. With Starship for Logistics, budgets for a moon base become comparable to other government research programs, and the supply chain necessary for a Mars colony becomes achievable. Looking further ahead, we might envision a sci-fi-inspired single-stage space plane, something like a Star Wars X-Wing that can take off from a standstill, reach cruising speeds, then accelerate into deep space, completely optimizing the launch systems for specific atmospheres and needs. A transition from jet engines into rockets is incredibly difficult, but is theoretically possible when it comes to high-speed flight. At slower speeds, Air-breathing jet engines would minimize the perils of carrying oxidizer, and wings enable assistance from aerodynamic lift. Reaching orbit is a speed, not an altitude, and if you leverage jet engines when accelerating in the thicker parts of that atmosphere before igniting faster rocket engines, competing with Starship prices might be feasible. In this case, one could consider many hypersonic companies as efficient launch booster stages. I remain hopeful that more advanced technology will make this sci-fi vision possible, pioneering orbital access that mirrors modern air freights of around $2 to $5 a kg. Launch is the beautiful beginning of a never-ending journey. To reach orbit, let alone build a business out of it, is exceedingly difficult. In a world of increasing unseriousness, the sheer complexity of it all gives you hope, reflecting mankind's fiery spirit and deep eternal curiosity for the mysteries of space. That's all for today's episode. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.